all right guys check this out i edited this full vlog in CapCut pc and in today's video i'm going to show you guys a complete breakdown on how to edit vlogs in CapCut pc all right guys let's get started and today's video is sponsored by my homies on patreon and thanks so much guys for supporting this dream if you want to be part of my patreon you can check on the link down below so in this very tutorial we're going to do something very different from what we usually do on this very channel i'll be using the main timeline and also a clean timeline to be showing you guys exactly how i edited this video all right guys let's go straight to it so with this part, you need to organize your videos before bringing them in CapCut. It's going to save you lots of time and also makes your life easier when you are searching for some specific files. When you return from your shoot or whatever shoot that you have, you can just go to your folder. I'm using Mac, so it's going to be my finder. Then you can just create a folder. When you look at mine, it says vlog one content creator. And then I have all the folders inside that very one. And with mine, I shot the video in just one day. So I've just named it videos. But let's say if yours, you shot it within that week and it has a different kind of activities you're doing, then you can just name it according to the day or the activities you're doing. Also, you can name it according to the camera. If you're using an iPhone, drone and also a digital camera you can be naming them so to make your life easy when it comes to color grading and searching for some specific files so with mine it was videos the songs that i'm going to be using also the screen recording that i took and some videos that i got online overlays images and then audio with the audio i have nothing in there so with this you can also easily save it for future reference at, as an empty folders so later on when you have a video project that you need to work on you can just select or copy that and paste it in that very project so from here you go to CapCut pc and then you open a new project this already been done then click on modify with the free layer, let's turn that on. It's gonna save our life later on. Then click on performance. Then on performance, make sure you tick on proxy. Then you, with the resolution, you can choose 540 or 720. This involves a lot of videos and effects, so 540 will make it easy for you to edit. It's gonna really reduce the size of the files and the quality too, but it's not gonna affect when you export the videos. So just click on save. Then go to the folder or the finder where you have all the folders in. Select or drag and drop in this very side. I already have it, so I'm just going to leave it just like that. And when you drop it, it's going to come in this form, organized and very easy to go through. So when you look at it, when I double click on that, it's going to give me all the folders in there. And when I want to go back, I can just click on all. Then I can go to videos and all my videos is going to be there. So this will make it very organized and easy to edit and follow along. When you drop the videos in here and the proxy is turned on, on this side, it's going to show one over the number of files that you have. So with this, you just have to wait for it. When Let's say if your files are 100 over 100, you wait when it's 100 over 100, which means all the proxy files has been transcoded. Don't go straight into editing. When it's ready, you're going to see it on this side. And if you care to check the full edit about the vlog, you'll leave a card up here. You can go check on that and later on come back and see what we're doing or what we're talking about. Every edit that I have, mostly I start with a rough cut and with vlogs, it really makes your life simple and easy. So with that, I'll just double click on the videos. And this, I shot it in a story form so you can see, I just did an intro introducing myself since I've been away for long on that very channel. And then later on, I show them what I'll be doing in the day. So with that, I'll just select the path. Damn. So I'll just select on that side, I for in point and then O for out point. Then I'll just drag and drop in the timeline. Now let's just change the ratio of it. Since we just dropped one in, we're going for 16 by nine, since it's gonna be on YouTube. So I'm just gonna click on that. Then from here, you can just go through it and do a rough cut of where you have the pauses. Damn. So just like that, I'm just gonna cut this side off. So from here, I'm just gonna continue the story to what I was doing during the day. So I'm just going to be fast on this side. 
So for the sake of not making this tutorial so long, this was a rough cut that I did. So after talking, then I showed what I was doing in the morning. So you make sure you shoot various angles when you're doing the shooting. Then you can just paste them together. With the rough cut, it doesn't really necessarily have to be a specific length. You just do the rough cut of it, telling a story with also the rough cut. So when you look at this, I did a workout. I went to the washroom, washed my hands, brushed my teeth, cook some food, and then back to the desk doing some email replying and all that. And then I continue with the rest of the day. So now this is where you add some extra videos or whatever you're talking about on top of this. So this one's in our main timeline, it's gonna be our A row or the main videos, if I should put it that way. This one's that I was doing some random stuff, it could be a B roll. And this side, I was talking about one guy who was saying something on YouTube. So with this, I'll just go to all, search for where that video is and just copy, drag and drop on it. So this is gonna be our B-roll and I did that throughout on the timeline. I'm gonna show you guys very soon. So now this is the main timeline that I edited this vlog. When you look at it, this was my A-roll. I was doing a talking on this very side. And whilst doing the talking, I had some B-rolls. So these are all B-rolls that were just on top of it. And then when you go, when I scroll to this side, you can see all this side, I was using the B-roll method. So any video or whatever you're talking about, you can place it on the A-roll videos. So when I'm done with the B-rolls, then I start working on the intro or the hook. So with this, with some of the vlogs, you can just go with just what you're doing in the morning, like this side, when you look at it, I was just doing a workout, brushing my teeth and cooking. You can just start with that. But I wanted to go with a fast paced intro, like somewhere 10 seconds, just to tell the viewers what the video is all about. So I use this very music as an inspiration. So I'm gonna show you guys. First of all, I just went to media, then click on library, then select black background, drag and drop in the timeline. Let me spread this. So the intro or the hook is gonna come before this. And I just want this to be there so I can bring in the music and drop some markers on the music. And this looks kind of short, so let's click on that. Go to the right side, click on speed. Let's reduce the speed a bit so we can make this very long. Now go to the left side, click on media, then click on local, then go to wherever you have the song. So this is the song I was gonna use. Just drag and drop in the timeline and play and listen to it. So when the beat drop, that's where I'll end and do some talking. So with this, I'll just drag this here and then let's spread it. So I just listened to when he was saying problems, problems, problems. So you can just be dropping marker by using command J or you can use this very icon to drop a marker when it's reached there. So I'm just gonna play and use the shortcut keys. So when you look at it, this is how I got the problems, problems. So it's come somewhere on this very side. So with this, I'm just gonna bring in my videos. So I just go to the left side, click on all. Let me just bring this down so we can see. Then we go to the videos. And with this, you're just gonna select some parts that looks really cool or you want it to be at the beginning of the video. So with my, I just wanted the workout to show. So I for in point, O for out point, drag and drop it in here. Take the volume down and then let's just trim it to this very first marker. So we're gonna use the marker and it's gonna snap on that very side. Now I want another angle of me doing the workout. So this, I, or oh, drag and drop in the timeline. Let's drag it and make it rhyme with this one. So I'm done with the rough cut and then at the end, I add some something I was saying in the video to keep the tension on. So I'm just gonna play and show you guys. Just like that and then I just end it on that side. So you can see it's somewhere five seconds just to introduce my people or to show them what the video is gonna be about. And when you look at it, the volume is so down. So this is what I did with all the audio in this very video. Click on that, go to the right side and click on audio. So far we only have this with the free version to play around. We don't have much. I don't know about pro version yet. 
So this is what I did. I take on this loudness normalization and it increases the volume a bit. Let me play and show you guys. Now let me take it off and listen to it. So it brings the volume to a normal level and also it sounds so low to me still so I increase the volume a bit click on audio and then I take them to somewhere 8 decibels. It depends on how your audio sound like. Mine was very low so I took it there in all the audio that I had in my timeline. Later on I added some effects to all these very videos. Click on the first one, go to the right side, click on animation. With the first one I was using zoom to make sure you click on in and it's gonna give this zoom in animation at the beginning. Then the rest of them clicked on this second one, go to the right side, click on animation, and this time around we're gonna use zoom out. So I'm gonna use zoom out for the rest of these videos. So now we have something like this. So for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just gonna leave it just like this. So just make sure it matches with the beat. Then one thing about this sound effect I used on this side, I'm gonna show you guys. Just drag and drop in the timeline. So this is a riser, I use this to keep the tension on. Let me show you. I'm just gonna leave it on this very side and play and show you guys how it sound like. So you can see it increases the tension and then it ends exactly when this video goes dark. So it sounds very low so I can increase it a little bit. Click on that, go to the right side. On basic under volume, let's take it up a bit. So now when it looks okay, we can add some out animation to this very video. Just click on that, go to the right side, click on animation then click on out and I used fade out for this. Just click on that and then when you see it matches exactly with the tension we want to keep. So now here I just added some intro to it, very simple. Go to the left side, click on titles, drag default titles in the timeline. Now go to the right, let's delete that. And then I was using a day in the life. With the font style, I went for D dot, it looks pretty cool. Went for bold, and then I chose yellow. I really like the yellow color. Then I added some in animation and also out animation to that. Go to the right side, click on animation. Click on in, and then select fade in. Let's go to somewhere 0.6 seconds. Then go to out and select fade out. Now we can just trim this black background down. Let's trim it to somewhere here. And also with the intro, I did one last thing to it. Go to the media, click on all. I did some screen recording of Lamborghini edits. So I wanted some parts that they were doing some fast pace cut. So something like that, just select that I and then O for out point. And then I want it to be on top of this very video. Let me just drag it to that very side. So I wanted just this part to show, take your player there, depending on what you're doing in your videos, increase that. And then I'm just gonna make the opacity go down at the beginning. So go to the right side, make a keyframe on opacity. In the middle, take it there, make another keyframe on opacity. Then go to last but one frame and make a keyframe on opacity. On that side, let's change it to zero. Then use this arrow to go to the middle keyframe. Then on that side, let's change it to somewhere 45%. We don't want it to be showing that much. I think I can go somewhere 25. Then use this arrow to go to the first one that we created and let's take it to zero. So it comes in at some point and then it goes back to zero. So that adds a little bit of tension to the edit. <laughs> So with that animation, this is how I did it. Go to the left side, click on media. Then click on images, depending on how where you have it. I'm gonna provide you guys with this very background. Just drag and drop in the timeline. Then I'm gonna rotate this. Just go to the right side on rotate, let's change it to 90. Now I'm gonna increase that to fill the whole screen. Now I can bring in the text. So with that, go to the left side, click on text drag default test in the timeline. 
let's make it the same length as now then go to the right side delete that and write what you were talking about in the video then you can change the font style i was using futura i'm gonna leave it on bold and then i'm just gonna reduce the size of it a bit then scroll down add a little bit of shadow to it you can reduce the opacity if you want depending on what you're going for and then the distance too then with that selected go to the right side click on animation then click on in i was using slide up click on that and let's change it to somewhere 8.8 to 0.1 seconds so it comes in it goes to the top now i'm just going to drag that to this very top because i'm going to bring in more under it then i can just make a duplicate of it click on that press option and drag upwards then with that selected let's just drag it down for now so it's going to be down here and then you can write whatever you want to write and with that we want it to come in when we were talking about it in the video so you're just going to drag it to somewhere like this let me just bring it down here so it's going to look very clean and easy so this comes in first and this is going to come in second so then you can repeat it depending on what you're saying in the video so i'm going to be fast with this side so now when i play and show you guys you can see it comes in one at a time very nice and clean then you can make out animation but with what i did i just made them the same length and then i added some overlay to transition to the next video so with overlays go to the left side click on media and i'm going to provide you guys with these very overlays i used in this edit click on all click on overlays it's going to be in overlay so i'm just going to bring some parts that i really wanted to show in the video so i want this very white side click on i o and then just bring it in the timeline and i usually go for six to eight frames so just go to where you want it to start from i want it to start from here then go six to eight frames forward and then just trim this side to that very side now just drag it on top of it and make sure half of it on is on this side and half is on this side then once that's selected go to the right side on blend mode just change it to screen so now it's going to transition next to the that timeline so with the jump cut i was using that to hide some pauses that i had in the edit for instance on this side so you can see this side it was very long pause so i just make a cut there b to cut on that very side delete that and then the next one that's going to come in click on that increase the size of it a little bit on the right side drag it down to this very side so it's going to look like there are two cameras that's taking you and it's going to hide that very pause that you had let me play and show you guys so you can see it makes it very smooth transition without really getting noticed in your edit so with the zoom in for instance this side i was saying so on this side i want a quick zoom in or a fast zoom in for them to know exactly what i'm talking about and it adds some cool effect to it so with that i just click on that on scale and then position then go five to six frames forward and make another keyframe on scale and position then increase the scale of it and drag it down to this very side so when you play and see how it looks like it helps them to exactly focus on what i'm saying in the video and i was using that from time to time in this very edit go to the left side click on text drag default text in the timeline then click on that go to the right side delete default text so it's going to be morning workout reduce the size of it a bit then on font style i was going for futura make it bold change the color to somewhere yellow add a bit of shadow to it then scroll up and then go to animation click on that click on in and use slide up i was using slide up a lot in this very edit let's increase it to somewhere 0.9 seconds let's increase that a bit then go to out under animation and we're going to use slide down for it to go down so slide down and increase it to seven 
Now for the text to really pop out, I was using this trick, the contrast trick. Go to the left side, click on media, then click on library. Then select black background, drag and drop under this very text. Let's make it the same length as the text. Now with that selected, go to the right side, click on basic. Then on opacity, we're going to take it to somewhere 50%. And I'm going to tell you guys why we are not using it on the videos itself. Then we're going to animate that to come in when the test is also coming in. So take your playhead to the beginning of it. Make sure you've selected a black background. Go to the right side, make a keyframe on opacity. Then go to where the test come in. Take your playhead there, make another keyframe on opacity. Now let's take it to where it starts to go off. Make sure you've selected a black background. Go to the right side on opacity, make keyframe. Then go to the last but one frame and make another keyframe on opacity. Now on that very side, let's change it to zero. Take your playhead to the very first one we created and make sure the blue is showing. That will show that you are on the very keyframe. Let me show you guys. When I take it here, you can see it's not showing. So just take it to that very keyframe and take it to zero. So now when I play and show you guys, it comes in when the test is also coming in. So now to make it smooth, just option K to bring the graphs out. Then click on this very one. We're going to use the opacity since it was the opacity we were doing. Click on that. Then click on the various keyframes and change all to auto curve. Now click on that option K to close that keyframe animation. Now we're going to bring in one more thing to make it really pop. So with that, go to the left side, click on effect, choose blur, drag and drop under this very text. Let's make it the same length as all of them. Then with that selected, Go to the right side and make keyframe on blur. Now let's take it to where the test come in fully and make another keyframe on blur. Take it to where it starts going. We're going to repeat the same process like we did for this black background and make a keyframe there. Go to the last but one frame, make another keyframe there. So on the last one, we're just going to change it to zero. Then use this arrow to go to this very third one. We want it to be somewhere 35%, depending on how you want it to look like. Then let's use this arrow to go to the second one. Let's change that to 35%. So it's going to stay 35 in this very spot. Then go to the first keyframe and change that to zero. So now when I play and show you guys, it comes in at the same time and then it goes out smoothly. So if you want it to be smooth, you can repeat the same process by using the option K, using the keyframe animation, just like we did on the black background. So why we are using this and not on the videos itself, you can see it's gonna affect all these videos, this one, two, three, without necessarily doing it on all the videos. And through that, this also we can just copy that by selecting all, Command C, go to wherever I want it to show. Then Command V to paste on that side. Then select only the text and then I can just delete the text and write whatever I want to say. So let's just say morning routine. And now I'll play and show you guys. You can see it's going to have the same effect and this is going to save you a lot of time if you're going to use the same along the way in your edit. So with the voiceovers, I was using that a lot in this very edit and I realized most guys use voiceovers when it comes to vlog editing style. And this is how I was using mine. So with that, let me just go to videos, click on that. So on this side, I was talking over what I was doing in the morning, like when I wake up, the morning routine, the workout that I did. So instead of doing the normal voiceovers, I was using a video as a voiceover. So I just select the side I was doing the talking and drag it on top of the videos. So when you're looking at it, I want my voiceovers to be under it without my face showing and this is the trick I was using. And if you remember correctly, we've been doing this when it comes to the types of transitions you can do in CapCut PC. And this is the J transition using the audio. So with that, click on the video, right click and select 
extract audio now we don't want the beginning part of this very video so we're just going to trim that off and then i'll play and show you guys so for this year i've not been to the gym yet and i'm planning to start somewhere first of february so i've been doing this home workout just push-ups so you can see later on my face is going to show and it's going to give us that j shape and that's what we call the j cut transition and i was using that a lot in this very edit this is going to create that fake camera movement in your edit looking like you were using some kind of sliders so with this go to the beginning of the video or where you want it to start click on that very video make a keyframe on scale and then position then go to the last but one frame and make a keyframe on scale and position so on that very last one we're going to increase the scale a little bit with this kind of effect, you don't really want to go too much. You want it to be very slow. So I would recommend somewhere 110 to 120%. Now when I play and show you guys, when you look carefully, it's zooming in slowly to my face and it's going to create that fake camera movement and people are going to think you were using sliders in your edit. So with this picture in picture one effect, go to the left side, Click on media, mine is under all, depending on how you label your folders. I dropped it in this, drag and drop in the timeline. Now I'm just gonna make this to fill the whole screen. Just rotate it to 90 and increase the scale of it. Now I'm gonna bring in the video that I'm gonna use. Go to all, click on videos, go to all, click on screen recording, so I'm just going to use this one, drag and drop in the timeline. Now let me just make it the same length as the background. With that one selected, let's reduce the scale of it to somewhere 55 to 60%. Then for us to create that shadow look to this very video, make a duplicate of it, press option and drag downwards. Now with that one selected, use the on-screen controls and move it down a bit depending on where you want the drop shadow look to go with my i like it to be on this very angle now with the down one selected go to the right side click on adjustments then click on curves and then on the brightness we're just going to reduce the highlights down to zero and then go to basic scroll up saturation let's take it to zero now when you go to video scroll up and then reduce the opacity a bit you can see it's going to create this kind of shadow look to that very video now let me just bring it up a little bit and there is one other trick that i was using in my edit select all of them right click and create a compound clip so i want it to be zooming in slowly on the screen so go to the first frame of it make sure you select the compound clip then go to the right side make a keyframe on skill now let's go to the last but one frame make another keyframe on skill and increase the skill of it now when i play and show you guys it's going to come in and it's going to zoom in slowly on the screen and i like that effect a lot go to media let's select that image in the timeline you can rotate it 90 or you can just increase it right on this side and it's going to cover the whole screen then we're going to bring in the videos we're going to use but first of all let me bring in text go to the left side drag default text in the timeline make it the same length as the background with that text selected let's delete that and just write something in here so i wrote expectations then on opacity i reduce that a bit now i'm gonna bring in the videos go to the left side click on media and i was having mine on screen recording let me start with this first one bring that in on top of the text let's make it the same length as all of them with that selected go to the right side click on mask we're gonna use rectangle select that and let's shape it in this very size we want it to look like Instagram format shape. Then on the round corners, let's increase that a bit to somewhere 15. Now just leave it exactly where it is. 
we're going to bring in the next video i'm going to use this one just drag and drop on top of that very one let's make it the same length drag it down to that very side the same thing as we did rectangle increase the size of it we're using the down one as our guideline let's select it to this very side and then with the round corners let's go for 15 once again now bring in the third one now we have all the three done nicely click on the first one then we just click on basic and then we're just going to move it to this very side make sure it stays in the center then click on this very next one we want them to be coming according to so we're going to leave this in the middle and then click on this last one click on the on screen and move it to this side of the screen make sure the y stays zero because we don't want to move the y we just want to move the x axis so now y is zero on that very side now if it's too big you can just select all of them and then you can just reduce the size of it now drop animation on all of them this is what you're going to do click on the first one go to the right side click on animation click on in we're going to use slide up once again then let's increase the duration to somewhere 0.8 seconds we're going to do the same with the out click on that on animation select out and select slide down now let's do the same thing with this click on that on animation let's select slide up increase the duration to somewhere as the same as the top one so it was nine on the top one and then we're just going to move it to this side so it's going to come in when this is also coming in so let's go to something like this and play and see how it looks like and then we're going to repeat the same for this very one click on that let's drag it to somewhere here in animation slide up increase it to somewhere nine seconds now let's just take it down to this side click on that on out animation select slide down so all of them will go down at the same time now when you are happy with the animation or if you want it to be very slow then you can increase the in animation duration when you are happy with that select all of them right click and create a compound clip with a compound clip selected make a duplicate of that press option and drag downwards now with the down one selected that's the one we're going to play and make it look like a shadow look click on that use the on-screen controls and move it down to something like that then go to the right side click on adjustments click on curves let's take the highlights down to zero and it's going to give us that dark look already then click on basic and change saturation to zero two now go to video and let's just reduce the opacity down a bit and because it's a duplicate of the top one it's going to have the same animation just like the main video and then when i play and show you guys i'm going to make a very detailed video on that very topic now i'm going to walk you guys through it very quick let's start with the music on this side i want just a low music or something at the background when i'm talking and that i used some random lo-fi music looking like a hip-hop and then i reduce the sound or the volume of it to somewhere minus 29 usually i stay around minus 23 to minus 29 decibels and then when i play and show you guys you can see my voice over or my voice is higher than that very sound or music that's playing now on this very side when i was showing this very first text i was using a whoosh sound let me just mute what i was saying mute that and mute this very music layer too when you click on this you're going to mute the music or if you want to mute the video you can just hide it so now i'm going to play and show you guys what the sound effect looks like so you can see I was using a whoosh sound, this is a low pass whoosh sound that I was using and it always makes it look like it's a wind. When I see the text coming on the screen, I picture it like a wind kind of form and it makes it look so cool. Then when you look at it, when I click on that, I usually reduce the volume of it if it's too loud. So what I normally do with sound effect is 
I mute just like what I did. I'll mute all of them and play and see how it sounds like. Then later on, I can turn all of them on and listen to it and see exactly how it sounds like. Then later on, on this side, I was using some swoosh sound just to mimic whatever is coming on the screen. And with that, when I click on that, it was a bit fast. So when I go to speed, you can see I reduce the speed to somewhere 0.5 and that's going to stretch it a bit. And that's one thing about sound effects. You can sometimes slow it down or speed it up to match whatever it's showing on the screen. And I've been doing that trick a lot. And also when you look at it, when you go to basic, it was really loud. So I took it to somewhere minus 12.0 decibels. Now when I play and show you how it looks like. Now with the overlay sound effect I was using, I was using this very sound. It's a trash bag kind of sound effect. Let me mute this one so you listen to it. So sometimes I use this and sometimes I use the combination of this camera snaps. I've seen people using that too a lot. And always make sure you change the sound effect from time to time. So let's say if I'm using one hoosh sound here and the next I want to use another hoosh sound, I will find another something very different to the first one so it doesn't look similar to the old one or the previous one i used now let's talk about this very music when you look at this side we've covered a video on that very topic too when i want my voice over this is my voice over and this is the music and this is just a sound effect so when i want my voice over to come in i'll take the sound of this very one down so my voice will pop out let me play and show you guys what I mean by that. So for this year, I've not. So when you look carefully, I'll make a keyframe one on this side. Make sure you select that very music and make a keyframe on volume. Then go somewhere 10 to 15 frames forward, still with the audio selected, and make another keyframe. And then you would take it down to somewhere minus 23 to minus 29 decibels. So it doesn't really sound higher than your voice over. So when you look at it, it's going to go slowly to minus 26 and then my voice is going to come in nicely. Then after, right after when I finish with the voiceover and I want the music to take over, I'm going to do the opposite of that. With that, when you look at it, I'll make a keyframe on when I'm about to finish talking. Then go 10 to 15 frames forward and make another keyframe on that very side. Then on that side, I'll bring the volume up to the normal level. So when I play and show you guys. Then the song is gonna come in at the normal level and it's gonna show whatever it's on the screen. So you can just be playing around this very trick to bring in music. And one thing about music that I did in this very edit that you can be doing in your vlog videos, it works pretty clean, just like a transition. So when you look down here, this is the music and this is me talking. And I, I brought in the music way ahead of this very video, you can see. So I can make the viewers start listening to the song before I transition to the next song when the beat drop. Let me play and show you guys. Let's see how fast we get there. So you can see the song was coming in and then you can just do it just like we did earlier on. Take your player to where the beat start to come in and the next video come in make a keyframe on that very side then go back 10 to 15 frames backwards and make another keyframe on that very side so you can see this very keyframe is on that side on that very keyframe we take the volume really down to somewhere minus 23 to minus 29 so the music will come in very slow in the background before it transitions when the beat drop to the next scene and that makes your transitions really smooth and now color grading, something I really need to do a detailed video on for you guys. You guys really deserve that. But with this tutorial, I'm just gonna go over it pretty fast. So this is what I do when it comes to color grading. I always start with color correction. I make sure all the images in my timeline have almost the same colors 
or similar colors so it will be easy when it comes to dropping a look on it disclaimer i'm not a colorist i've been doing this for the past five years and this is the process i always do so make sure for instance like this this my video i was shooting indoors and the lighting is always going to be different especially when it comes to vlogging you go to some places that have this warm light and you go to some places that have some crazy blue colors and all that kind of light so this is indoors go to the left side click on adjustments drag and drop on that very video and i was using this adjustment a lot then make sure it's covered that very image and always make sure you select one video that you're going to use as your hero image so with this it's indoors and most of the indoors i was shooting was having the same lighting system so i'm just going to use this and later on use it as a reference for the rest that are shot indoors it sounds kind of complicated i'll make a detailed video for you guys so with that selected let's bring out some scopes click on these three dashes and click on this color oscilloscope i wonder what it sounds like then click on turn on so we're going to turn that on so what this means is this is just rgb parade and this overlay it's the same as this but it's been grouped together to form one image or waveform and this is vector scope this is really cool if you want to see where your skin tone line is or where your colors or the other colors are setting so you can see it has all these primary colors that's red magenta blue cyan green and yellow all of them sitting here so first of all you're going to use this as your guide it's going to really guide you when it comes to color grading so this step is color correction it falls under color grading so now i just want the contrast to look a little bit filled up on the screen so just i just start with the contrast increase that a bit so when you look carefully at the waves i'm stretching it as much as i can so this is gonna be my shadow line below zero is really gonna be dark and above this is gonna be too bright so i just increase it a bit then I can later on play around with the shadows. This is where I wish I had the pro version. They are having the color rules that's going to make your life easy when it comes to color correction. So I just play with the shadows, drop it down a bit. And then with the highlight, it looks too bright for me. So I'm just going to bring it down a bit more, increase the contrast a bit more. Then I'm just going to increase the saturation of it. To something like this where I can see all the colors popping so when you look carefully at the image you can see my RGB colors are way thrown off for instance you can see this is supposed to be white and when you look at it my blue channel is way off more than the green and the red so you'll be using all these things to be doing all the color correction before you drop a look on it so all of them are gonna have almost similar colors so when you look at it I need to balance this so I'll get a good white balance. Sometimes I just use my eyes and sometimes if I have white object in it, then I'm going to use that. This time around, I'm going to use this very white and I'm going to show you guys one trick. Click on the video itself, then go to mask, select rectangle. We're going to select this white side. It's supposed to be very white. So I'm just going to click that then click on the adjustment layer we're going to use that to balance the white now i'm going to use the temperature and the hue if you're having wheels it's really good when you, i love using the wheels to do color white balance but with this i'm just going to use the temperature and the hue sliders so with this i'm just it looks like it's a bit more on the blue side so i'm just going to warm it up a little bit and we look carefully on this side we just selected this side so it's supposed to be white and when it's white all the colors are supposed to be very at the same level so i'm just going to increase it a bit to the warm side and when you look at it it's going to really turn white you can see all of them are together now and also when you look at the parade all of them are at the same level so when you have something like a white you use this trick to get the white balance really nailed down now click on the video and let's turn off the mask now you can see we did a little bit changes to it if you really want to take it to the next next level then you can be doing adjustments layers for individual 
effect that you want to use so you can see the before and after like for instance if i wanted to see exactly what the white balance is doing i could have just made a new adjustment layer so i can easily turn it off and on because this one is having all the contrast levels that we did and we can't really see exactly what the color balance that we did looks like now we need to work on our skin tones when you have skins in the videos with that we're going to do the same trick that we did earlier on click on that go once again to mask turn it on this time around select circle and we're just going to select where i can see a skin of me so i'm just going to select my face usually it's really cool when you select the forehead especially with ladies so you don't have so much makeups on that so i'm just going to select my face and this very side when you look at it the line you can see the line on this very side this is the skin tone line and your colors are supposed to sit on that when you select a skin on that image i've just selected my face that's having my skin and you can see my line is really on that take the mask off so when i'm happy with how it looks like this is my hero shot then i can save it as a preset just go to this side click on save as presets then when you go to presets it's going to start loading on that very side then when it's ready right click on that rename it and just name it something that you remember during the editing so i can name this hero shot one so now if i want to use it on all the indoors this is an indoor shot that i was using and it's having almost the same lighting system so i can just select that one and drag on top of that let me just increase it to cover the whole so when you look at it let me turn it off so you can see it's going to have the same settings that we did on this very hero shot and then later on we can go in and do the necessary changes when it comes to the contrast the saturation and also the white balance you can do it right on this side you can see this side the colors the white balance is way off so we can just take the warm side a little bit off to balance the colors on it and i'm looking at the waveforms on this very side it shows this very side on the spot and you can see it is white now so when you are done on all the videos and all of them are having the correct white balance and the contrast level that's when you bring in your look that you want to go for so let's just say let me drag this to all of them these are all indoors so i'm just going to drag all of them on it so let's just say now i want to add a look to it that's when you go to the left side click on adjustment click on customize drag and drop in the timeline then you can just make it to cover the whole timeline because we want it to be one look for the whole timeline so from here then i can add if i have some lots that i want to use to create this very look so this i'm just going to click on the lot on the right side click on that so let's say if i want to go for them and because now we've changed it to rec 709 standard profile picture we have to select a lot that's for rec 709 so i'm just going to go for vision for then with the strength i can just dial it down a bit if it's too strong for me now that you know how to edit vlogs in CupCut pc i would love to see how you guys go about it you can tag me on instagram catch you guys on the next one Peace.